let's take a look at the first chapter of First John. Um, to start with, we could go to another place studying what darkness and light is in the New Testament. You could do a word search study there to see what it means. But I'm going to tell you right up now that light is where God presides. Darkness is where the devil does. That's where there's sin in the darkness. And in the light, it's absent of sin. Think of it. Keep that in mind. It says right here in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, Then this is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Okay, makes sense. God is not in a sinful place. He's in the light. So what about us? Chapter 6, or verse 6, If we say we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So if you say you're with God who's in the light, but you're walking in darkness, which is sin, you're, you're lying. You're not telling the truth, and you're not with God. So let's take a look at verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, and we have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Oh, now there's the answer between darkness and light. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from, notice the word, all, A-L-L, -L, all sin. So there is no sin in the light. Okay? He cleanses us from it. There's no more sin in you. You're in the light now. He cleansed you from all sin. Now, in verse 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, if you look at the previous verses, it's telling you that Jesus will cleanse you of all sin. And you can't be in the darkness and be cleansed of sin. And you can't have a relationship with God without being in the light with him. This is a very uh, completely polarized position. God's not going to be around sin. He's in the light. You have to be cleansed of all sin to be with God in the light. And if you say you have no sin, you will deceive yourself. And the truth is not in you. Is that talking about while you're in the light with God, you still have sin going on? No. It's talking about your condition before the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you of all sin. That's what this next verse is talking about. It'll, and watch. It'll be proven here real quick. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now that's the answer. Okay? He'll take care of this problem. And it says in verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So, the point is, everyone has sin. Now, you start out innocent. You have no inherited sin. You're innocent. When your brain develops to a certain age, that's called the age of accountability, then temptation gets great, and every person on earth has fell to temptation and sinned. So, the answer is, walking in the light with Jesus, Jesus' blood will cleanse you from all sin. Now, you're cleansed. So, where are you? You're walking in the light with God. But you say you're walking in the light with God, but you're still in darkness. You're a liar. Remember what it said? It said right up there in verse 6. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Again, what's the answer? It's real simple. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light and have fellowship with one another, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse us from all sin. So you're in a state before you're saved of walking in the darkness in sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. So now you can be in the light with God. Okay? And in your previous condition, before Jesus saves you and cleanses you from sin, you are in the darkness. And you have to confess your sins to be forgiven and to be straightened out. It's real simple. And if you stand there in front of God and say, I never sinned in my whole life. Well, that's what it's talking about in verse 10. If you say you have not sinned, you make him a liar and his word is not in us. You see, when the word is in you, you're not going to be committing sin. You're going to be cleansed from sin. You will be more than a conqueror. And it's written in the Bible, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Okay, remember, God's in the light. He's not in the darkness. You don't have any fellowship with darkness if you're in the light. And when you're in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you from all sin. So how do you stay in the light? It's real simple. You have the Holy Spirit come, which guides you in all truth and empowers you to walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. You crucify the flesh. The flesh is dead. You mortify it. You mortify the deeds. And you, by faith, have the power of God come in your life, and now you're walking in the Spirit. The Word is in you. You're in the light with God. There's no darkness in you. So when Jesus said, go and sin no more, he meant it. He will give you the power to overcome. Here's the problem. The unbelieving, faithless majority of Christianity, they have enough unbelief to sink a battleship. And they'll tell you, oh, you'll always be in the flesh. You can never, you can never win. Uh, you'll always be under the power of sin. Well, they're giving all the power to Satan. When Jesus says, I'll give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and power over the whole enemy and nothing shall harm you. You can resist the devil and he will play. You don't need to be weak. You can be strong in the faith 
and walk holy. You see the difference? So then you will be in the light. That's very, very important. That's 1 John chapter 1. If you go to chapter 3, my heavens, you know what you're going to see? You're going to see this. And whosoever commits sin, transgresseth, okay? Uh, the law is for sin. It's the transgression of the law. Well, if you're not in sin and you're walking in the spirit, you have no relationship with the law. But they put themselves back under it by living in the flesh. And here is the key. Watch this. Listen to this carefully. Uh, verse 5. First John 3, verse 5. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. If he takes away your sins, how much sin do you have? Zero. Zero. Read the verse. It's right there. Whosoever abideth in him sins not, verse 6. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither known him. That's the false church. They say, well, we just keep sinning all the time. Well, then you've never seen him, and you don't know him. Little children, verse 7, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Now you're in the light with God. You got that? He that commits sin, verse 8, is of the devil. Get this. For the devil sinned from the beginning, and for this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's in your life. You're going to commit sin? How many of these preachers, if you walk up and say, do you commit sin? They go, yes. <laughs> I've said, well, it says right there, if you commit sin, you're of the devil. Are you of the devil? You would be surprised how many people who are progressive, professing Christians, and even preachers, when I pose them that question, I'm not accusing them, I question them, they'll say, yes, I'm of the devil. <laughs> I walk away from it. God bless you. Do you know what it says in verse 9? Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. That means if you have the Holy Ghost in you, and you don't want to commit sin, God is going to give you the power to resist the temptation. It's a thing of the heart. It's the seed in your heart. Okay, verse 10. In this in this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. And I, I rest my case. Watch this video over and over until it sinks in.